Hello and welcome to the show. Today I'm going to be playing around a little bit with automation. Been a little while since I've played this game. I reserve when I come back and see what's changed, see what's been updated, and so on. And well, there's quite a lot. There's quite a lot of new sort of car body styles around the place. Various new fixtures and fittings get added all the time. Uh, but I did notice a little while back uh, something quite interesting. So we're going to start a new car, and we're going to build something that probably shouldn't exist. You see, we can go into engine position. Now most cars are either front-engined or mid-engined. A lot of vehicles you'll find on here are, but there are various rear-engine cars. Now for a while it was really just the Porsche style body. There have been more and more added. Now we're going to go back in time a little bit. We're going to go for, let's go for it, we'll go for an early 90s sort of a car. As you can see there are various vehicles, including some unusual ones. Things like this Alfa Romeo 155 style body shell. The really curious one is the estate car. Yes, if you want, there's also a Corvette. A Corvette shooting brake as well, if you <laughs> so wish. Uh, that's the sort of body style you expect for rear engines, but yes, if you so wish, you can build a rear-engined estate car. And that is what we are going to do today, because I cannot think of anything more counterintuitive than a rear-engined estate car. Uh, do we go for the bigger state car? That might mean we get more... Sure. Might mean we get more engine in the vehicle. It seems like a completely absurd idea. I don't know if it's going to work. I mean, handling-wise, I don't know if it's going to work. I don't think it would sell, somehow. But you never know. Uh, we're going to make it, say, at, at a vaguely reasonable... Say, a, a vaguely reasonable price point, hopefully. Uh, I'm not actually sure what we would... I can't imagine... I was just looking at like, engineering time and, and costs and whatnot. Uh, like, we'll go with... Sure, we'll go with a fairly... We'll go <laughs> fairly, fairly basic. So, it's going to... Oh, no, what? Ah, do we have the... Okay, so it can't be that. It's going to be anything else. I guess we'll go with a light truck. Sure, why not? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's going to be a big old boat. Uh, so, we'll go with... Yeah, rear longitudinal engine. Uh, now, we're going to want... We're going we're gonna, to, of course, as ever, I'm building it. We're going to go with something vaguely sporty, um, but vaguely usable. We're going to try and make it a half-sensible sort of a car at the end of the day. Uh, now, they have changed the way this all works. Uh, you can now save engines. So you can put engines you've already built into uh, different cars and so on in a much more efficient manner. Uh, though it means all my engines are a horrible mess. We're just going to make a new engine. Sure, I've made 80 engines or something, apparently, in this game. So... Option-wise, now we could go... I don't even think we could fit an inline six in the boot. Uh, <laughs> could we fit a tiny... We could fit a tiny inline six in the boot. Uh, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, we could get a V6. We could actually get a pretty decent-sized V6 if we wanted to. So we're going to be rear-wheel drive for the fun. We get a four and a half litre V6 if we wanted. Um, could probably get a V10. It's going to be a teeny tiny little V10 if we were going to get one. Uh, but really the sensible option if we're going to go for a rear engine car the boxer engine does make the most sense sort of compactness boxer engine or V6 I guess make the most sense for compactness's sake shall we say and how big can we get it uh, we can get about a 4 litre now I tend to like Revy engines so we'll go for a 4 litre 4 litre flat 6 we'll make it out of aluminium now we're using 90s tech just for I say just for a, for a bit of fun. If we kind of use modern tech, try to sell the car because it's such an old body style, it gets a little bit skewed. Not that the stats actually matter; it's just out of curiosity. But we'll still, I'll still try and make it into a half decently fast kind of a car. That's that's the idea. Uh, we probably won't. We'll we'll see. We'll go with the. We'll go with the forge stuff. We'll see. Um, if that gives up, basically, along the way. I know, again, this is not, I think it's not so much. We're going to need a crazy engine. I want a half decent engine, but I'm not going to spend hours trying to perfect the engine, and I want to keep it naturally aspirated. Uh, it's very easy to whack a turbo on and get a million turbo lags. That is an official measurement of turbo lags. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to not, we're also going to keep the car as a vague sort of a road car. Be performance based, but vaguely a road car. Uh, we will go with. What is uh, max power for? I doubt we're going to go above 473. We'll see. Maybe. Oh, any luck, maybe. Uh, oh, wow. Well, yeah, max power. Okay, well, it's going to go with that. Um, we will go with, sure, some vaguely sensible sort of exhaust. Now, let's ramp up that. How many RPMs can we get? Not as many as I'd like. 
which is a shame. I guess we can probably ramp that up a little bit. Can we, oh, can we get... See, ideally I want about... Uh, 320 is not too bad. Can I... Oh, can't really whack that up anymore. Uh, we're kind of at the limit of that. If we go... Oh, which is it? Top end. Just a couple of... So I want to go a couple of ticks on there. The reason being so that I can... In fact, if I push it too much further, the pistons actually start giving out. Uh, pistons. I guess you want lightweight forged for the <laughs> for the RPM. Uh, conrods don't actually like it either. Up at that point. Uh, wait, was I changing conrods? Yeah, this crank's fine. Uh, we don't have to go to 8,800. We can stick about 8,500. I mean, 350 horsepower. Uh, it's not the worst. No, it prob there is probably... Uh, ah, my exhaust is crap. <laughs> I was going to say, there's probably something I have forgotten about, and the answer to this one here would be the exhaust was garbage. Uh, I forget, 400... Considering we're building this car in 1991, the year before I was born, what was quick around that time? You could have done 911's Ferrari's Diablo. Diablo was early 90s. With Kuntash. Diablo was later. Uh, 409 horsepower is a lot. <laughs> That's your really high-end Ferraris and... Lamborghinis level of power, pretty much. Um, let's give it a listen. Surprisingly quiet. I mean, it's not a terrible sounding car. But it is, yes, yeah, surprisingly quiet and refined. I, I was running a, I don't really a couple of tests with the different engines I had, and I turned my computer down. But apparently, the flat six is a very quiet. I, mean, tell you, I remember the flat six used to be insanely loud when I did various stuff on this game. It might be very insanely loud when it gets imported to beam, let's be honest. So, this somehow has the engine at the back. Uh, I'm kind of curious. I'm not <laughs> The paint shop really annoys me, so we're going to just leave it as it is. Um, does. Can we. Show engine? No, apparently not. I want to see how the engine slotted in here, uh, but it's not going to let me. Not going to let me see it. Right. So we're on to the. I say the fun part. I I really like this part. I am not the best by any stretch of the imagination when it comes to designing cars. Christ, they're a bit bigger than I expected. Uh, yeah, I am not the best at all when it comes to designing cars. I have fun designing the cars, absolutely, but yeah, I'm not very good. Not very good with building them. I kind of just throw ideas around and see what sticks. And this car here is kind of tempting to go just for... Oh, I'll go for the Legnum style lights. Uh, <laughs> the Legnum Galant style lights. Actually not... Oh, stay that way around. Kind of. No, not sure that'll work. And like, it's really easy. I said be really easy. It's really easy for this car here. You just go for like the big, chunky square lights uh, that would fit in there relatively sensible. And to be fair, you probably would find that on a car. Of, of this sort of an era, do we have... So, we're going to go for some grills. Uh, ooh, that's new. <laughs> that looks mildly terrifying. <laughs> that really looks terrifying. I'm sure it works on, like, sports cars, perhaps. But there's a, there's a lot of these, like, quite interesting grills that... I'm not sure that looks good on anything, personally. Um, but there's a lot of grills that, yeah, like, contextually... Contextually, sorry, might work on various cars... On some, perhaps not quite so much. But yeah, that's new. Not seen those before. There are stacks and stacks of these fixtures now. I mean, back when I sort of started playing this game, uh, there was, you know, you you could you could do some very clever things with the car if you wanted. Um, but a lot of the time, you had to like kind of make almost make your own grills up. Whereas now, there's so many different options. And if you're clever, there's now so many options that when you want to make your own grills, you can do you can do so much with the game. I'm I'm very impressed. I am not. I'm not the best person, perhaps, to show a lot of what can be done. I kind of like that grill just because it's, it's got a little bit more shape to it than just being a straightforward square, or a straightforward rectangle, I should say. So I kind of like that. I mean, it's a, just a fairly normal front end to the car at the moment. Can we... I don't know if I want like the lip at the front. I maybe just want a little bit of a lip at the front. We'll give it some wider wheel arches. Uh, that's mostly for tyres. So we can get... Oh, not quite like that, though. <laughs> not quite the full bolt-on fender look. Uh, can we get rid of the... Yeah, I'll get rid of the lip at the back. I don't like that. Can we... Ooh. Okay, we can kind of make a little bit more sportier looking at a state car. Uh, what's that doing? Oh, is that... Oh, this is... I uh, don't remember being able to do this with cars. Huh. Okay, that's... Again, that's new. <laughs> We're making it a little bit more aerodynamic. 
That's pretty neat, actually. Uh, yeah, lots of... That might, be, that might be a thing for a while. I swear I've looked at cars. I haven't been able to do that for with stuff. But never mind. It's something you can now do. Uh, we need to finish off the front end. See, I'm, I like going for... My general, my general style. It might not actually work so well on this car. I like going for like, this is kind of a little bit of Lamborghini almost. We go for like the big corn events. I think a little bit too big. Go for like the corn events and then have another. Uh, maybe we go for maybe we go for the sort of straightforward rectangle here. Uh, just along the bottom. I'm not sure about the grill. What is the why does the mesh seem funny to me? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure that is just me. If we put that forward, uh, actually no, maybe I want to have, maybe I do want to have like just a little gap. The mesh is slightly weird on that. Can't figure out why. Is it the type of mesh perhaps? It's almost like it's got a slightly blue tinge to it. I can't figure out why that would be the case. Okay, no, maybe not use that one then. There's, I mean, there's, yeah, we're, we're looking literally just for a straightforward rectangle. That looks closer... Yeah, I don't know what it was about that other one. <laughs> don't know if I want... No, I, I, I do want a straight edge to it. That might do the trick. Uh, do I want... That's the style I want. There we go, possibly. Oh, no, annoyingly, I like the shape of the other one. <laughs> this is a, so this is where you can spend like just a year designing and over-designing and in general me never being satisfied with whatever I end up making. Where did the first one go? Maybe that will do the trick. It might end up making it look like a happy, cheerful car. Uh, you know, maybe that's not a bad thing. Happy, cheerful cars are good, right? Uh, <laughs> it might just be, might just be my eyes are going funny. Maybe it's the, it might just be the reflection. Okay, right. Ignore me. <laughs> I'll go back to where I was, uh, wherever it was. What? I don't even remember what grid it was now. Crap. Uh, it was a massive one. Something like that, I think. Actually, you know what? that might work. That might work. I think it might just be lighting or something. I'm going to not worry about the blue tinge and expect it to be like lighting related. No, that's not right either. Crap. <laughs> oh, I'm useless. Sorry about this. There we go. That'll work. I might flip it upside down just for the way that it's sat. Okay. There we go. I'm happy uh, with that. It's a fairly sensible looking front of a car. And then we can... Get. Oh, it's not that, because that's like a weird random big old block. Is it that one? No, that's the like floating one. Christ, these are some massive number plates. Uh, there's one of these that I can't remember now because it's been a while. But it actually sits in the car. I think it's that one. Or sits on the bodywork, should we say. There we go. So we can have a number plate on the front. It'll sit there quite nicely. All right, it's... It's not the most exciting front of a car, but it's also not offensively hideous. Generally, I will take not offensively hideous in terms of my car design. <laughs> it's not not completely, completely horrendously ugly. Fairly happy with it. Uh, unfortunately, see, I would be tempted to try and put, like, tower lights up here, but they're always really difficult to do. I always feel like most of the... Like, most of the body styles don't really suit tower lights. I don't have the right kind of... Tower light. I know you can like twist these around vertically if you wanted to, but they never quite look right to me. Anyway, I'm probably doing something wrong. Let's be honest here. Uh, so we'll just go with more, say more more usual, more usual ones. Um, stick them there. Kind of does the trick. We'll get that number plate. It's that one. Uh, yeah, we'll go with that. We'll go with the British plate, of course. That can sit up on there. Uh, do we go... We get an exhaust. Ooh, there are new exhausts. That's cool. <laughs> haven't haven't seen them uh, before. I think we have double, don't we? Oh. Did click mirror, but I think it wanted to place it. Why, Why does it do that? I just want the exhaust... Just want the exhaust. I just want two exhausts. Do I have to click there and then mirror it, and then I can move it? I guess that. I guess that works. Sure, why not? Actually, we could. No, and then we go through all of that again. Other new stuff. Uh, you have these lips that you can put on the vehicle if you want to go for like a sporty-looking 
uh, back end to a car. Now, perhaps it doesn't suit the estate car as much, but it means you can get like the crazy diffusers if that's what you are after. Uh, that can go away. Yeah, if you want to go for like a big, wacky diffusery style thing on the back of your car, you can. I can't imagine. I can't imagine you're going to sell very many rear-engine estate cars full stop, let alone ones with massive diffusers at the rear. <laughs> it does seem slightly unhelpful, shall we say. I've now got Distractoed. I should have just left the exhaust where they really were. Um, but, yes, exhaust, mirror the thing, because you can't apparently mirror first before placing, and then move it into position. Let's just say it's going to sit there. Apparently the game has decreed it shall sit there. Can I click on There we go. Okay, we'll move it a little bit further out. Uh, oh, I'm not quite that far out. Christ, why do you... <laughs> Apparently, exhaust mounting is the most difficult... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Mounting of the exhaust is the most difficult task in the known universe. I'm, I'm almost at the point of just give, not giving it an exhaust. There we go. Right. That That is going to have to do, because I'm bored of it now. Uh, do we want... Uh, we never get anything looking... I'm sure there are ways. There are things you could do at the back to... You know, but it's just going to kind of just be an and fairly basic car. Right, let's get some door handles. They're quite important. Need to be able to get in and out of the vehicle. So, door handles and door handles. There we go. We can get in all of them. Uh, we will need some wing mirrors. Uh, something along these lines, perhaps. Just fairly straightforward. Wing mirrors, you can look behind, etc. Try and make it look like a vaguely normal car. I could go... Body moulding? What the hell is that? I don't know. Not going to play around with that, because I've not seen that button before, or not paid attention to it, and that would probably be dangerous. <laughs> Spend half an hour of the, well, half the video trying to figure out what that does. It's something new. Ooh. What are these? That's kind of cool. <laughs> they are also new. I kind of don't hate it as just bringing something a little bit different. What's that? Oh, wow, I don't even know what that is. There's a whole new... We've got like a box? Something. don't quite know what that's for. But it's it's something there. I mean, I know there were bumper bars, like chrome bars before, but there's this kind of like off-road bars if you want, big like truck wing mirrors, uh, various other fixtures and bits. Yeah, you can do a lot. You can do a crazy amount nowadays with the with the cars. There's there, there's just more and more stuff added. Uh, wheels. I will go. <laughs> I don't really like any of the wheels in here. I guess they're not too bad. Uh, they kind of work for me. But yeah, a lot of the wheels I'm just not a particular fan of. Uh, we have not got a way to fill it up with fuel. Let's give it one of them. In fact, actually, I don't even know where the fuel tank would be, but we're going to put it over there. Why not? Just because it's normal. Um, <laughs> I guess the, it, we, we've made a mess of this. this is just, it's, life is more difficult because I put the engine at the back. Oh, there are also some new wings if you're interested in them, and there are some massive wings you can put on the car. Uh, this one in particular, a personal favourite of mine, if you so wish to have the most ridiculous of sort of time attack wings on your car. We're not going to have that on this, but it is now an option, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, you can make some wacky, wacky creations. Uh, I think we're kind of okay for for this. Oh, we can put extra windows in as well. Huh. I knew it had a sunroof for a while, I hadn't seen the window bits either. So yeah, you can stick those in if you want to make like your own little uh, windows on on vehicles. Pretty pretty nifty. There we go. Basic. I say basic looking. It's a decent looking car. Uh, it reckons it can do 195. We're going to gear it up just to see if it can get close to that. Uh, we're going to want... Yeah, we're going to want a decent diff. We've got 400 horsepower going through the car. Now, I am going to put the car on semi-slicks. While I know that is not what you would sell the car with, perhaps, I'm also well aware that we're going to drive this on beam and Beam does best when the cars are on semi-slicks. Okay, that's why we're going to put it on that. Uh, other tyres, the cars are very wobbly on, on Beam. We've got some pretty big tyres all around. It's going gonna, it's gonna to need it, 
let's be honest here, it is, it is going to need it. And likewise, we're going to need some pretty hefty breaks. If it's reckoning it can do getting on for 200 miles an hour, you know, we're going to be wanting some, some stopping power. Uh, we've got to make that even. There we go. Perfect. Uh, none of that. Not worry about any of that. Uh, I guess we'll give it some brake airflow, sure. Uh, I always like to give it a little bit extra rather than the required cooling, like literally at the required cooling. I don't know, maybe that's just me. Um, do we sell premium or spot? No, pre yeah, you know what, we'll go with, we'll, go, we'll kind of make it a nice place. We'll make it a nice place to be in here. We'll try and sell the bloody thing. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to turn on, I'm not going to have any of the traction aids again. That's largely because if I do put them on, there's a real chance that Beam will have trouble getting the car slowed down. So I'll just leave them off for now. Uh, we want sportiness if we can get it. Uh, that's going to be quite expensive though, so we'll show it gas monotubes. Uh, I mean, muscle car is probably not that far away. It's one and a half tons, just 11 miles a gallon. Uh, it oversteers. That's good. Now, I'm not going to spend particularly ages tuning the... Uh, Oh, the suspension. Now, I know you can do a lot with this, making it do the various things that... Uh, can I... I can't get, I get back to what it was, just like, by default. <laughs> default stuff was apparently much better. Uh, we'll put it down to there. Yeah, you can do a lot with the tuning of this. I could spend, again, I could spend many hours tuning it and get it to be something vaguely sensible. Well, I'd say vaguely sensible. Um, I'm not that yeah, I'm not all that fast. Um, that's just out of curiosity. Okay, I, I say I'm not going to look that fast, and I'm just out of curiosity. If we put it on, like, sort of medium compound tyres, it does make it slightly more <laughs> sensible. So I want this, though, for primarily for beam uh, conversion. I reckon it is 168. Is that aero limited, do we reckon? Uh, I don't actually know if we can... I don't actually know if we can check what limits the top speed. It shouldn't be gearing limited particularly um, handling and brakes the circle test it could probably do with being stiffer or lower or something along those lines I don't know <laughs> uh, that seems to be doing good things with the numbers oh. any more than that and it goes horrible apparently I don't know maybe it's too uncomfortable or something uh, well, yeah so it's like a family sport well, if family sport premium is kind of what you're looking for in an estate car. I guess, I guess that, like, there's like a threshold. If it goes over, it makes it too uncomfortable or something. I don't know. Regardless, I used to know how to shoot all of this, but <laughs> there we go. Uh, it reckons it would cost you 52000 Take out the tyres and some of the other shenanigans. Uh, that's probably fair. It, it's terrible miles a gallon. But you've got to think the RS, the original RS6 came out, what, early 2000s? And that was putting out not much more horsepower than this. So, I mean, this is a precursor to the RS6. Even better. Uh, Markets-wise, it is... Yeah, I mean, found, Family Sport Premium is kind of... Where is that? Apparently it's a GT in Fruinia. Uh, there, it's probably too expensive, possibly. And there... It doesn't, I just want the fuel for there, because that's 91, in the, 91 run or whatever it needs to run on. So, yeah, I mean... It's roundabout there. Which is kind of what I expected... From the sort of category I expected to end, lots of things end up as muscle cars apparently, according according to this game. So, for yeah, your fifty thousand dollars, you get a four hundred horsepower flat six estate car. That sounds very reasonable until you consider it's got the engine in the back. Now, <laughs> the biggest question I have is how on earth is this thing going to drive? So here we are with the car in the game ready to give it a quick drive and as you can see yep that is the engine all the way at the back i've come to the italy map because this should be a good test to see what our handling is like at some low speed stuff and potentially at some higher speed stuff as well oh careful now uh, <laughs> uh the brakes are a smidge sharp so before i uh imported the car over i did very quickly off camera, increase the size of the brakes. The, gate, the automation was reckoning it was suffering from brake fade, so I thought I'll increase them at uh, the size, basically about as max uh, bigger tires of uh, brake, sorry, as I could get in the wheels, uh, in the hope that it might uh, might not have them overheat uh, as much. It does mean that though that they become very, very grabby, 
uh, in beam this generally. In fact, we've had a lot of beam breaks. You don't have ABS, they can be really difficult to get slowed down. You do have ABS, and sometimes the ABS just stops the brakes, the car from stopping at all. So it's a little, little bit of a problem. Uh, so far, these little mountain roads, this is not handled terribly. I thought it might be weird. At the end of the day, it's a very silly thing, putting the engine in the back. I have a feeling if it does let go, it's going to let go really badly. Oh. Apparently the engine went off, the engine fired back up before I noticed it going off, so <laughs> it kind of has a lot of grip up until the point where it doesn't. Immediately helped by the slick tyres, but yeah, if something goes wrong with this, I suspect you're going to have a big crap. If you start sliding this around, I suspect it's not going to be very happy with you because the weight distribution is going to be a little bit strange. Um, I'll probably get more understeer as well. I was expecting a bit more from it because we've got so much weight at the back kind of pulling the car down if you're accelerating out of the corner, it's just going to want to understeer, and that doesn't sound healthy, I'm tested across these jumps, but uh, oh no, that's a solid thing. I mean, I guess technically we didn't really hit much of importance, in the <laughs> mechanically speaking. We did ding up the uh, radiator a little bit, I actually pressed the wrong button there, but never mind. Uh, there's a different way of resetting I was going to use, and forgot which way it was on the D-pad. You know, it could be worse. In the handling department, it could be a lot worse. I, <laughs> I like it. It's, it's a really silly thing. At the end of the day, why would you ever have a rear engine to state car? It, wouldn't, it defeats the entire purpose of the state car in, in many ways. But it's a really fun option. I really like that automation has now got more and more options. You know, when it started having rear engines, it really was just a couple of body styles that got them for a while. Uh, but now there are a decent number of, of vehicles that you can, if you so desire, put the engine to the back of. And whether that's a good idea or not is up to you, but I like, I like the freedom. I like the freedom to do really stupid things with my car. And if you want to put a 400 horsepower flat 6 in the back of an estate car, well, automation is one of the very few places, one of the very, very few places where you actually can. That's a big wheelie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we lost the, lost the plastic trim bit at the back. Yeah, it's not too bad to drive. It's really not as awful to drive as I was as I was fearing it, it might end up being. So yeah, have an experiment. Play around with the various different different body styles. So there's tons of updates uh, coming out for this. They actually start getting to do more and more of the uh, light campaign mode. I might have a go with that if people are interested seeing me try and run a car company that doesn't produce a constant weird decision. Or maybe just try and make a car company that works based on entirely weird contraptions that shouldn't actually wor work. It's not very good off-road. Christ, that is like a small sun. What is that? Why is there a reverse light in it? Did I leave a light fixture somewhere where I didn't mean to? Is that part of that plastic bar? Uh, we have a... Sw <laughs> We have trapped a star and put it on the rear of the car, it would seem. Uh, it, it, that's unusual. But yeah, the <laughs> if you haven't played Automation for a while, uh, I, I mean, I highly recommend this game full stop and the ability to convert cars to beam is great, but yeah, if you haven't played Automation for a little while, I do recommend go checking it out because there will probably be a bunch more bodies, styles added, and new features and things you can do uh, with the cars. Weird combinations you can try and build if you so wish. So yeah, lo lots of fun. The rear engine estate car, I'm not sure is going to catch on. I'm not I'm not sold, but I'd say I'm not sold. <laughs> it's, it drives quite nicely, but I do think it might be a little bit too counterintuitive to work, but never mind. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you all very much. For watching and until next time a uh, goodbye